Okay, so as as John has said, I think the this book was made for a, for a journal for a book club. <laughs> like it's uh, I mean, like if you're get introduce your, yourself to R and you're still a beginner, it might be difficult. But in a book club, I think it's good because it allows there's a lot of space for discussion, opinions, and adding things to to it. So today I I will go be going through the slides and discussing it with you and I I really encourage you to to engage because I think this is the only way we'll make the best out of this book specifically because in in the other book club for example it's very pedagogical like I can talk like a teacher or facilitator but in this one it wouldn't work anyway so the topic of today is to break the logic and the output into pieces making things in chunks so that you can follow the 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 logic that underlies the, your whole project. So on this is the okay. how, how do I hide the, the bar at the top from Zoom? Um, I don't see we don't see it. So see it. yeah. Okay. Um, so I, uh, I, go ahead. I just I work on two monitors, and so it's always on my other monitor. I don't know. Um, I think it just collapses, so I think it'll it should stay mostly out of your way. I hope. Hopefully, this would be the case. Let's see. <laughs> yeah. So uh, breaking the the logic of of the workflow of a project into chunks not only helps it helps you in in many ways. So as the one who is making the project and doing the analysis, it's the best thing because. You can easily uh, debug the code. You can go back to the code and see if there's something wrong with the code, and you can improve it. But also, you can, uh, from my experience, you can think of it like a, like a mind map, and like you have a workflow, and then you can dedicate a script to each step, so that uh, not only you can go back and do a debugging if there's something wrong, uh, without spending a lot of time, but also sometimes you it brings like that you have like this mind map and better understanding of the whole project. And you see if there is something uh, that there is points of improvement or there is something that you can maybe merge some steps together. So having this structure only comes if you have multiple components and they are ordered, yeah? So here uh, the author is very much in favor on the scenario on the left where you have different uh, scripts. And each script is dedicated to a step. So the first one is uh, smell, test, uh, wrangle, and then model things, and then make figures based on the model, and then report. Uh, and as you can see here, they are all also like verbs, like it's tidy as well. <laughs> uh, so you have verbs, and you have so there is an action, and it gives you an idea about what is inside each code. Uh, and as I said, like this is much better than having everything in one script because even in your script, if you have everything separated and uh, maybe it, it, sometimes it's uh, yeah you get tempted to put everything in one script because you can see that everything is on top of each other. But when things go wrong, it go wrong very bad, and you spend a lot of time uh, with the code and everything. So yeah. Putting things, uh, separating things into chunks makes it easier. And this is shows the, the way you can do it. So the, the diagram here is the very famous diagram from R from Data Science, I think. Yeah. And here, you, uh, the example that we have seen here, now it overlays it at each file for each step. So here you can import the data by the first script. And then for wrangling, maybe it's at the tidy step. And then you need to model the data so you will transform it and then model it and visualize it and spend some time in this uh, loop. At, at the end, you will report it to communicate with others. So from one side, as I've said, like it makes your life easier uh, mentally and also like practically. But also when you try to communicate, sometimes you not only communicate the, the report, but you can communicate the whole project, so the whole directory. Someone would come after you and continue, or someone would review your code. Uh, so also, like this would make it easier to have things in chunks, and uh, not not chunks, but separate the the workflow into different scripts, so that it's easier to get uh, yourself uh, 
to understand the project and what it is about. Yeah. And this is doesn't only apply to scripts, but also to data. So you have the script and you have the input data, and then sometimes you have everything into you can save all the output into one object and our data. Yeah. And I think this was a topic of discussion in a previous uh, uh, meeting when we talked about environment that it's not recommended to save the environment uh, it, the image sorry yeah the, the object in in the in the environment and to an image and usually it would be saved like this in our data and the reason that this is not uh, recommended is first uh, it's better to have things into different uh, separate separately so you have each output from each step separated. And also because uh, now you can see you have the extension, you know, which at which step you had the output of uh, this output, you can name it differently. Uh, but also if you have this data and then you load it into the environment and you have a different object with the name from one of these objects, it will be overwritten. So it's, it gives you some, some problems and uh, it's not a good practice to do. So again, the, the scenario on the left is much better to the one on the right. Uh, and again, uh, where can you place these different uh, files, different outputs? Here again, we are looking at the, 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 the workflow, the tidy workflow. You can see that, for example, you can start by using uh, a data set as an input and you will import the data as the raw data, but then you will take it and keep doing some data cleaning and data wrangling, which might be uh, one, of the, one of the important parts, uh, important, one of the important steps of the workflow. And you go from raw data to data, yeah? So now you can start to see that uh, the object has changed it and you can see that you have cleaned it and now it's, the data is ready for the analysis. Uh, but now you take this data and then you model it and after uh, this input data, you can uh, you will have two other objects, which is the fits and uh, maybe ESTs estimations maybe. So this will be the output from the model. Uh, and here you can see that you don't need to save everything as a table, but you can also save it as an R object. But this time it's not an R data, but it's an RDS. So an RDS, as I think personally, I prefer it because you can read it and assign it directly to an object instead of just uh, throwing it in the environment where, and you don't know uh, what is inside this object. Uh, and then the, the output also includes some plots. So you can have some plots and these plots here, uh, as you can see, you, you don't put the output, uh, the plots with the other outputs, but you put it in a different directory. And yeah, so this is, uh, as you can see here, if you only have one object, one R, date, one R object where you have all the outputs. It's not, uh, you don't have a flow, you don't have a structure to your project. Maybe it's easier to share. You'll have, you think you have one file and share it, share everything at once. But uh, yeah, I, I, having things that are modular and things that are separate is always preferable. But uh, how do you bring everything together? So now we have talked about scripts the advantage of uh, separating the scripts into uh, separating the workflow into different steps dedicated to uh, each step, different scripts dedicated to each step, sorry. And then we also talked about the output data and why we better separate the data uh, at uh, the data from each step instead of having everything into one object. And this table gives a few examples, for example, uh, here, if you started with an input data, and let's call it raw data, and then you have uh, an R a script. So you will take, you will load the data, and then you will do something uh, with the data. You might get some understanding of your data. So this will be maybe an exploration of the data. Yeah, and then you can also use the, the R data, and then do use another script called wrangling. And this would be you would do some data wrangling. So you uh, do data cleaning and data. Uh, Maybe you do wrangling and modify the data. So data now is ready. So it's called data CSV. And then you can take this data and move it to the next step, which is to model. So the data is uh, ready for the analysis. So you model the data. And now you don't have to keep the data anymore because you can uh, now replace it with the fits from the model. 
and the estimations from the model. But at the same time, you still have the data object in your project. And now you add it to it two other uh, objects. Yeah. And now you can take all this object and pass it to the following step. So the following step would be after wrangling and after modeling the data, now let's make some visual inspection and some communication by making figures. Yeah. So you take all of this and you make some figures and you will save the figures into a, a directory. And at the end, you will take the figures from here and maybe you out of all of these are the three objects the only thing that you would like to communicate with your uh, customers or your colleague is the estimation so you will take these two uh, this directory and this object and you would wrap them uh, in a report an r markdown report and you can communicate it as an html a document or a pdf so you can see that this is like you can read it row wise and then uh, column wise but th this summarizes the the previous uh, the, the previous slides and why it is uh, yeah maybe ad advisable or recommended to use this flow the separated flow instead of putting everything together uh, but uh, here I will maybe stop for a bit and ask you for for input like what is your experience do you, you which 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 uh, party do you belong to the one on the left or the one on the right? <laughs> Oh, uh, for data, I'm definitely the one on the left. I I never say just use uh, .r data. Um, I don't know, early on, I got introduced to save RDS, I guess, and it makes it, you know, it's it's modular, um, it tends to be smaller, uh, just all around, it feels better <laughs> to use. Yeah. I, I will say on the like file breakdown, I don't think I'm as good at that. Like I will sometimes have one giant RMD that has everything I'm working on in it. And it would probably be better to be better, you know, to split things off. Um, yeah. And do you hmm. use uh, MD5? Like if you generate an object, do you use, uh, do you cache it or generate like, if you want to generate the data, would you cache the data or would you cache the fits or would you save it as an RDS uh, with like, command save RDS? It somewhat depends what I'm doing, but. Give me a moment. Oh. I need to bring the charger. Sorry. Okay. It, it depends what I'm doing, but a lot of the time I will save RDS um, and, and read RDS explicitly. Uh, some you know like if i am saving something to hand off to someone outside of r then obviously i don't you know i'll save it in some other format um yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah my, my experience is that i just discovered the, the you, that the dot r data type of uh saving uh, files, um, uh, saving, saving objects uh, from the environment, it's very useful. And um, if, if you just, you, you can even save uh, HPs separately. So you don't, don't do like save image, but you do save and then the name of the object and then file equals to the, and, and you name a file. So you can have different uh, dot r data object to load. Uh, obviously, if if you are working in R, that 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 uh, works for me. Then then uh, you might have uh, you might need to save a, a, a different format. So like have a, a CSV of your uh, tidy data, uh, which is can be very useful, uh, but sometimes it's it's like occupying too 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 much space. Sometimes it's, it's too big. So uh, yes and not. So <laughs> somehow yes. Sometimes left, sometimes right. Uh, I I used to split this dot r data in in different objects. That that turned out to me useful to me. Yeah. 
uh, one thing that I usually get wrong is if I have a table and uh, a data frame and the data frame has row names and then I save it. And then when I read it, I don't read it with read.csv, but I read it with read underscore CSV. And then I lose the, the row name. And I was like, oh. And it's, it's, it's OK. Like if you, if you are the one that did the mistake, you can go back and then set the row names as a column. And then when you read it, you need to account for this and put them to a row name. But sometimes you get, uh, you receive some data from a collaborator and you can't, you can't find the gene names or you can't find the feature names. What is happening here? It's only numbers. And I, I, I remember that I spent a long time with such a data. I was looking for things. And by mistake, instead of writing our uh, read underscore CSV, I read read.csv. And voila, like I found that it, the, the row names were there. And you can read them with the read.csv, but not read underscore CSV. It, it gets dropped when you load it with read uh, underscore CSV. Good to know. <laughs> yeah. And here, I actually wanted to add something. So in my experience, I, I like to be somewhere in between. So uh, I like to not to report, uh, not to make a separate report, report but I, would, I like to make like a, a file that connects the R scripts together. And put them into one report. So I don't, I don't want to write a lot of text or to summarize many things. Sometimes this is the, the goal. If you have a project, then you need to make a summary. But uh, the workflow that I use is now I'll switch to another tab. Can you see the tab? Yeah. So I'm a huge fan of this child document. So uh, ch child document is if, if you are working with uh, R Markdown. Usually what I do is that I will have a, a file called mother. And it would look uh, like, sorry. Yeah, so this is maybe a project that I'm working on. So forget about this part of the top. But here I have a lot of R Markdown files, yeah? So, and the way I do it, instead of putting everything in R Markdown, this would not be a good idea, but I separate the them into different R markdown for each step. So I have here the libraries, the parameters, the functions, load the caches, maybe input, so many steps, yeah? But then I load them into the, this uh, uh, file called mother, and I use this uh, child in the chunk, and I control whether this chunk needs to be evaluated. So it would uh, read this R markdown file, uh, run it, and put the output, not only the output, but the the code and the output both to the to the main file. So uh, this is the, the way that I like to do it. So instead of maybe having a record that is separated and summarized, if you are lazy to do this, just put everything together so that people can look at all the code that has been run. Uh, but now all the code is not in a single script, but it's in a single HTML, which is easy to navigate and easy to look at. Yeah. So this is, and also you can control it. You can separate them into the different tabs if you have some R markdown skills uh, or this um, kind of thing. Yeah. Do, do uh, does any of you use child uh, or sourcing of the R scripts? Uh, I use I have used source and I have aspirations to use child documents um, and I I never have and it's probably one of those things that uh, just doing it you know it's not there's not a huge learning curve just do it but yeah. in my head I'm like oh I don't you know I haven't had the time to learn how to do this it's like yeah it's just just do it John yeah um, so I, um, when, when yeah. I was preparing for this meeting, I came across this blog, which uh, I make a use of the child templates, but in a different way. So what it, what if you look here at this chunk, uh, he used the function called net child, so that he controls the environment into which the child uh, our markdown would be evaluated. So here he uh, he or she like it defines an environment. And then in this environment, it defines uh, the name of the species. And okay. here it loads uh, 
they load the, the R markdown and they set the environment. So it would not be loaded in the in the current environment of your work, but you control the environment into which this file would be evaluated, which is a really fun, nice. This is something that I haven't uh, tried before. Yeah. Um, I can't remember what it was for, but Tom Mock had a talk about yeah. child environments, or not child, child uh, markdown documents that was really good. Yeah. Like all kinds really good. of, yeah. Like, wait, what? You can do what? So yeah. um, I highly recommend, um, I'll post that in uh, the Slack when I have a chance to look it up. Yeah. Um, I think it was uh, parameterized our markdown or something. Yeah. Um, Every, everything is, you can, yeah, it, it was amazing. It was an eye opener. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so uh, this was the, the first part. The, the second part will briefly touch on something that I'm sure um, all of you already know, which is like version control and the value of uh, having your code and project maintained not only locally, but in the cloud, on the internet. Uh, this, uh, this is one of the first lessons that I learned in my PhD. My supervisor was like, never have your uh, everything locally, something might go wrong. So this would cost you a lot. So always like use a, put your data, uh, your code and your analysis and your project in uh, in a ripple and maybe like a GitHub. And I think for, for a GitHub, uh, for me, I, I'm a very, very basic user of GitHub. So I almost only use like three verbs. So I add things, I commit things, so I know what, <laughs> They what kind of modification have have I applied at this time point of time, and then I push things. So briefly, like to 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 commit thing is to during your analysis, you know that at this point you would like to save. So because this is a milestone maybe, or something smaller than this, but you will com commit these uh, updates of your project so that you can go always go back and restore it if something happened. And then if you would want to compare, uh, maybe I'm not sure if compare two files or two comments, maybe two comments, you can use the function diff and then it will show you what have been removed, added, uh, what has changed, something like that. And so what has changed here and why? Why this would be, you will find it in the comment. So you will always leave a message with the comment to tell you why things have changed. And this will show you what changed here. At least this is how I understand it. Uh, and here, this I think these are two scenarios, which as a very basic GitHub user, uh, I could only see the, the, the main idea, but I don't know how it was done. So I will try my best. So in the first one, <laughs> yeah, you have uh, everything in one comment. So you, you put, you put everything at once, so you said, uh, no. Yeah, so here you have different comments. So you have render as report, formula, co-author, uh, average species, and then another thing, yeah? And here, there is no structure between the, the files. So you don't know which came first. Maybe one file has been split into two or something. So. I think in order to avoid this is to make a branch and then work on the branch. And here you can see that there are two branches. So in the first one, uh, you have two files. So these files are related. Yeah. And then you have these two other files and then they are related to each other. But I, I don't have a, a clear picture in my mind of, of how this. Yeah. yeah. The, this is one of those where um, the slide needs the speech that goes with it, I think, to really make sense. <laughs> um, but, you know, in theory, at least branching, um, you can see what has changed in a real example. And so you can see, uh, you know, how things come together. But yeah, I'm not sure what that's supposed to show. 
honestly, before working, before uh, joining the the other book club, where I started to use branching, um, I don't think that I've used branching ever. So I I think commit things and push them. But yeah, now I always use a branch, start a branch, do things, and then kill it. It's uh, it goes with the other book club, but uh, use this PR in it is your friend for branching it, it creates the branch yeah. and it like you know it cleans everything up make sure that you are creating a branch from the latest version of things so it'll do a, a fetch before it does the branch um and then pr finalize or pr finish rather uh will like clean everything up when you're done um so i'm a big fan of using the use this commands rather than like if I have to type git commands at a terminal, something has gone wrong. <laughs> but otherwise, I am using all, just the use this functions to do it. Yeah. And yeah, this is the how things work. So on one side, you are working on a project, and then you make some updates. You push it to the your GitHub repo, and then this would allow others other collaborators, or maybe this is you, but from the future, to pull it and work on it. Uh, and here, uh, she, uh, the author is, yeah, it's, it's the same thing from last slide, but she here she's talking about this book. She's also an author of this book. I think it's uh, the topic of another uh, book club, if I'm not mistaken. It It isn't, and yes. uh, yeah. I don't know how how we've never gotten one spun up for it because I mean I guess part of it is I only use a very small part of it and then from there just use use this um but yeah the happy git with r is kind of the reference if you have problems with your with git and r studio or just you know without r studio whatever um yeah. very useful and yeah that was Jenny uh wrote it for um, a course she was teaching, I think, and then sure. it has grown from there. Um, back before she worked at our studio, I think. Yeah, anyway. and I also like. Uh, I always had it in my mind to to give it a go and read the whole thing. <laughs> Usually, if if your work is more on the analysis side compared to the development side, your use of GitHub is 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 minimal like you are not very involved and if you are not working in a very large team where you have a hierarchy and someone would review your code and do all of this uh, your uh, your 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 use of get and github would be not that big i would say i think yeah. more than more important than the the get and github is the to develop the habit of pushing things and not uh, not saying like oh I'll do it tomorrow or keeping it uh, making a comment every week or something. So the habit is more important. Yeah, I think and and with this um, we come to to the end of this small um, basic chapter. And I think there are some recommendation. Maybe this is a book. Uh, and here and yeah, but before before ending, there was actually a. Uh, Jenny has recently published a paper for best practices. Maybe, I don't know, maybe let me check it. Because I think it's relevant to the topic of this chapter. Uh, But in the meantime, the, uh, I think this 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 was it for the for today's meeting and for this chapter. Uh, yeah. Do, do you have any questions or maybe input or something? Uh, nothing more. Like I think that that went well, I, and I think like we can probably count on the fact that these sessions probably won't take the full hour 
maybe yeah. you know feel free to grab an extra chapter whenever you're presenting if you feel like it um because they're they're little bite-sized pieces of information but they're good like they're good things to think about uh, it is uh, for me as i said compared to the other book club where there's someone like teaching and then you run the code <laughs> and all of this this is more about the personal experience or the opinionated thing <laughs> uh, this is this works for me yeah. so this is this is the paper that i think this uh, yeah yeah uh but i'm not sure how how much it's still relevant to be honest with you. no that was uh yeah that was five years ago but i think that there was another oh. similar paper that was very recent uh, i'm just uh it's interesting looking at um like the affili affiliations on uh these that they're not like for a while greg wilson was at our studio i think after this and jenny had been at our studio before this and now tracy is our at our studio uh tracy teal um mm -hmm. i'm not sure about the other authors but it, it's funny like this is the paper where they came together <laughs> um our studio but yeah very big i love just I love the title of the paper and I love that a lot of like the stuff that uh Jenny Bryan I don't know is famous for in the art community is this kind of idea of um kind of the nuts and bolts level of just making things work and making you know so she has the book on how to use git and she has the the um talk that she just gave uh, a couple of weeks ago and that she's done versions of before on how to name files um mm -hmm. and you know it's just getting into the things that no these are things that like are really useful it's not how to use you know xg boost or how to create a neural net or something mm -hmm. like that end it's the just the basics of no make this work do these things uh to not be annoying um I've had a couple of times where uh like I've I don't know submitted an issue on use this like you know would it be possible to xyz she's like uh probably but like you know it would cause confusion here and it would do this and just like I don't think it's worth <laughs> making that work because of all these other things that it would just make things more confusing it's like oh yeah it's a good point okay um and so just that that I don't know the no nonsense Type of stuff I, I like uh that she brings that yeah. great all, all right. right this was it from my side all right well that that'll do it for me too um like yeah. i said fill out yeah sorry <laughs> but fill out the times and i'll re-choose a time on saturday to find one that works a little better for everybody um, and hopefully we'll get a couple more people to join in. But if not, um, you know, I, we did one last week with just two of us. And I would like to, to keep going and get through the book because it is useful info. So. Great. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank I'll you. I'll see you all next week. See you guys. Bye. Bye.